taking an almost perfectly straight shot north 40 minutes to the Coyote Creek Bikeway off Rosecrans Avenue in Santa Fe Springs. Ryan's seventh line starts with a kickflip backside tail slide before throwing a nollie heel flip into a frighteningly long and steep gap. Hello, and thank you for joining another episode of Dumb Data, where we break down the numbers so you don't have to. In this breakdown, we'll take a look at Canadian Captain of Sending, Ryan Desenzo's 1990 video part. Posted on Thrasher Magazine's YouTube channel on December 13th, 2021, 1990 depicts a 35-year-old Ryan Desenzo jumping down huge stair sets, chomping big rails, and overall taking more impact than anyone his age today. Before I commence with going full neckbeard, armchair, skate critic, and poke fun at Ryan's obvious missteps with his music choices for his part, and his lack of trick diversity, it needs to be made clear that even if you don't consider this man's age, Desenzo is skating bigger obstacles than most of the top dogs of the current era. Desenzo is a legit contender in SLS. Even the most recent Super Crown in Jacksonville, Florida back in mid-November saw Desenzo competing, and it can't be overstated how big he goes in the streets. On top of all that, Ron's- Ron? <laughs> Ryan's skating has a fun element to it that doesn't necessarily make it relatable, but his energy on the board is infectious, and I have no doubt skating with Desenzo would result in me jumping on my first handrail or hucking a good old ollie down a set bigger than five stairs. Now that I've buttered up the homie, let's get to some sh slinging. Instead of taking the easy route and echoing the same sentiments from the comments section of 1990, I'm giving Ryan the benefit of the doubt about him choosing two extremely distracting trap songs in this six plus minute part I ain't got no time for these man I swear that my money too long for you bro after a little digging, both songs Money Long and Made It come from producer Sid O'Kane's Fruition album. I read Sid O'Kane's Spotify bio which indicated he pursued a professional skateboarding career that ultimately fell to the waste side, and numbers show most of his listeners are from Canada. Based on this knowledge, and not knowing whether Ryan is tight with Sid O'Kane or not, one possibility is that these songs were chosen as a friendly gesture by Desenzo to give his friend exposure. Ryan probably knows that his skating speaks for itself, and viewers can simply turn down the volume and still watch him send if they're not feeling the music. Personally, I'm a fan of rap, and in many cases trap songs that have a bomb beat. I tend to lean on using hip-hop beats as a backdrop to most of this channel's YouTube edits. In this 1990 video, however, once we get past the decent instrumental intro of a piano playing a melody in a minor key, the lyrics in the first verse include gratuitous use of a racial slur set against the backdrop of a white skater ripping through SoCal, which just doesn't really feel right. Beyond that, that, I'll leave it up to the comments section to address the political aspects of this since most of you can probably articulate the nuances better than myself. Maybe Ryan didn't have any creative control over the editing process and he got f***ed over by his sponsors who delegated the post-production work to an incompetent team. Having said all this, choosing a great song to your skating footage is much easier said than done. It's rare that you can knock it out of the park like Spanky did in his America This Is Skateboarding part when we were all blown away with a stripped down version of Close To Me by The Cure. I remember when Aurelian Gerard's street part was posted and the music choice was similarly distracting even though the skating was otherworldly. Aurelian's song wasn't as debaucherous as the music in Desenzo's 1990 part, but the cringe was palpable once the lyrics made their way into your ears, talking about getting on your deck and getting down and being on your grind. Skateboarding has a lot of similarities with music in the sense that they're both forms of art. So skating to a high energy rap song about skateboarding leaves nothing to the imagination and loses the magic of a great marriage between the two mediums that would otherwise result in a dope video part. Before we move on, I have one question about the music as it pertains to future skateboarding parts. Ryan Desenzo is a fairly big name in skateboarding. 
So will this obviously bad song selection in 1990 be the catalyst that starts to change the trend of skaters and editors being more careful about music choices and skate parts? Okay, so let's jump into the tricks. Uh, uh, I wasn't trying to commit all the way right there. I think I broke my rib. Uh. Lines. 1990 features 11 different lines, beginning with a 2140 South Wright Street, Santa Ana, California based rooftop tray flip gap to kickflip drop. How do you find this spot? There's a MedMen dispensary right across the street. The squad must have re-upped on some good good, saw this roof on their way back to the car, and that's when the light bulb went off. Line number two starts with a nice sounding metal to metal pole jam before Desenzo sends a 10 foot descent, then caps it off with a nice tray bomb. Keeping the tray flips alive, the third line starts with a tray flip near the intersection of Via California and Calle Bienvenido in San Clemente, then Ryan jumps into a crook on a uniquely curved ledge that flings him back into the street, which prompts the fourth yet still delicious tray flip of the part, and the line ends with a steezy kickflip gap in front of the Cancun Racket Club. Heading into line four, Ryan's half cab kickflip sends him into a power slide heavy downward trajectory. And then what the f Two stacked trash cans are a perfect obstacle for a 180 floater back into the banked street for a switch hill bomb. If this was some stranger's house, Desenzo and the crew are gonna have to take an L for this line. I mean, it's cool to see a high 180 like this, but f***ing with people's trash cans is a lowbrow move. The fifth line starts with, yep, you guessed it, a 360 flip down a fat 11 set, and then a backside blunt on the 13 rail. That's a big one-two punch right there. Right at the intersection of 9th Street and the PCH in Huntington Beach are the famous hubbas that Ryan Desenzo backside nose grinds into regular after a tasty little nolly flip appetizer down the five stair. Taking an almost perfectly straight shot north 40 minutes to the Coyote Creek Bikeway off Rosecrans Avenue in Santa Fe Springs, Ryan's seventh line starts with a kickflip backside tail slide before throwing a nollie heel flip into a frighteningly long and steep gap. Undoubtedly someone in the comments will know where this spot is, but I came up short, and Ryan hits this spot several times in 1990. Line number 8 starts with a half cab kickflip nose slide to regular, before a beautifully done backside grind down the 16 rail. The ninth line is perfectly wrapped just in time for the holidays thanks to Ryan's flat ground impossible, which leads to a board slide that, damn, he's going all the way, and oh f he pulled off that trendy slide to grind combo on our with the last minute feeble fake out. A lengthy kickflip backside crooked grind starts off line 10 before Ryan gets skinny around the utility pole and throws the sixth line tray off the curb into the hill. The final line of 1990 is comprised of a perfect flat ground switch heel flip over a trash can, and with only a minuscule amount of feet shuffling, Ryan had to do it to him and got himself a 9 club in the streets with a switch frontside 270 front board. Single shots. Over 70% of 1990 is made up of 60 single shots, initiated by a frontside grind down a 20 rail, where Desenzo barges the landing amid thick foliage. Deciding that a run-of-the-mill backside tail slide is a little too basic for his taste, Ryan does the trick into a banked roof, where I'd like to think even though it's not the case, Desenzo went straight from that trick into this backside 180 off of the roof. The switch backside blunt calls back memories of when Desenzo did this trick down the Hollywood 16, but the pop over to regular into the bank gives the 1990 clip a facelift. Fresh off a Bible study session, Ryan board slides through the kink after church in City of Industry, California. Fresh off of a Physics 101 study session, Ryan nolly backside wall rides down the side of Poly Pavilion on the UCLA campus. Adding to the list of spots that no one would skate except him, Desenzo does a scary frontside tail slide to drop at this construction site. Ryan's frontside grind to high speed gap out down this massive hubba appears to be the same spot as the long board slide to feeble from his lines. 
Desenzo's backside 180 off the kicker into the thankfully vacant street gets a solid two seconds of hang time. And then we add another 180 to get the full 360 after returning to the sender bender backside heel flip spot. Transition isn't neglected in 1990, and this kickflip frontside nose pick on a DIY quarter pipe is evidence. What looks at first to be a regular frontside Smith gets a full frontside 360 on the dismount at the California State University of Fullerton six stair outlet. Ledge. This switch gap to frontside lip slide looks like child's play in relation to all the previous clips. But before we can spend time to dwell on it, we're teleported to Highland Park's Franklin High School for a backside overcrook down a 12 rail. The YouTube thumbnail of 1990 is a photo of this backside Smith on the curved bench. And how satisfying would it have been if Ryan landed on the curb for a 50-50 out instead of this awkward roll off the curb? Oh, he's tech too? Ryan kickflip backside crooks then wiggles his flick foot for the nollie big flip out. This zoomed out view of the kickflip gap shows how massive the Coyote Creek bikeway bank really is. Some plywood panels and crust galore sums up the spot where Ryan hard flips into the bank. Opening up a 7 trick rail onslaught is a nollie gap to board slide, which is done at a spot that's probably bigger in real life than what we're seeing on camera. Ryan punishes a 10 stair rail at UC Riverside with a kickflip back crook, and then immediately does the same trick but substitutes the kickflip with a heel flip. Needing more board movement before a rail trick, Desenzo three flips into a lip slide, and then right outside of UCI's Phoenix Food Court is a seven stair that gets treated with a switch varial heel board slide. If my guess is correct, this kickflip front lip takes place outside of the Greek theater in Griffith Park. How Ryan lived to tell the tale of landing a nollie heel flip backside grind on the Bancroft Middle School 9 stair in Hollywood is beyond me, especially when you consider the toe side lock-in. As if we haven't already been punched in the face enough huck after huck, Desenzo nollie frontside 360s down what, 12 stairs? Next up we've got an anti-gravity nollie shove over the safety rail and into the next zip code of 1990's 27th single shot. Sure, Ryan's bag of tricks might not be as deep as the drops he throws himself down, but the few tricks he does, he does them damn well, like this long kickflip down the stairs into the hill. And who needs to get all fancy when you're having the sickest session with Canadian steez master Mark Applebutter present? Circling back to an aforementioned unknown spot, Desenzo backside blunts the middle portion of the rail before jumping out with five stairs left. Remembering how gnarly he is, Ryan throws down and winds up for a huge frontside shove gap into Green Avenue in Los Angeles neighborhood Westlake at the Immaculate Conception Parish Center. A hectic nollie heel manual requires Ryan to ollie away from the contaminated sewage water. This ollie into the abyss finds Desenzo rendezvousing with the homie, who gives this trick two thumbs up. Okay. Just when I was getting worried this part was going to end without a signature Ryan Desenzo frontside flip, we get just that after going to the unknown rail spot for a third clip. Oh, and why not throw in a lofty pop shove it while we're there? In case you weren't aware, Ryan can do 180's switch into banks, which prepares us for four back-to-back -back flip tricks over and or down gaps. This Fullerton-based backside kickflip puts Desenzo into the intersection of Highland and West Santa Fe Avenue. Unsatisfied with only one clip at the spot, Desenzo adds a switch frontside flip to his earlier backside 360. Ryan's switch heel flip down this 10 stair at Santa Ana's Fremont Elementary leaves him with not too much of a margin for error on the landing. A rooftop nollie backside heel flip tops off the flip trick gap section. Desenzo's straight on nose grind occurs at the intersection of Avery Parkway and the 5 on ramp in Mission Viejo, and gets us ready for the final 20 single shots of 1990. Showing this pole who's boss, Ryan frontside heel flips the f out of it thanks to a kicker. Temporarily escaping the SoCal bubble, Desenzo gets technically complex with a switch frontside tail slide big heel flip at Jim Bridger Middle School in Las Vegas, Nevada. Still happy with riding Switch, Ryan's Switch Varial Heel Flip is proof that he can not only do other flip tricks if he wants to, but he can do them down big <laughs> Ryan seems to have no fear of jumping into busy streets after nose grinds, as is showcased here with the nose grind frontside 180 into the intersection of Atlantic Boulevard and Pine Street in Alhambra. <laughs> 
Hitting the same Thurgood Marshall High School spot in San Francisco that Gary Rogers grinded up in Devante Jolly's Godspeed, Desenzo opts for a frontside wall ride. A long nose slide on a round rail doesn't sound enjoyable at all, but Ryan makes it work and pops out to fakie. A switch ollie over the rail into bombing this bank seems to give Ryan more speed than he anticipated. A second story kickflip drop into the sidewalk makes me wonder how someone his age doesn't have permanent heel bruises. San Clemente's Shore Cliff Middle School is the location of this long distance nollie backside kickflip. It's a repeat trick, but this frontside flip is done the hard way over the ledge and all the way into the street. This inward heel flip down the four block gets the kids sparked. It might not have been filmed in Raleigh, North Carolina, but even if Ryan's a Canucks fan, he still showed love for the Caniacs on this handrail. Backside smiths are always nice to see, especially on a huge round rail. One of the best things about this frontside feeble is the paint chipping off on Ryan's dismount. Orange County's Buena Park is where Ryan frontside 5 O's down this 12 stair into Argyle Drive. As much as I want to get stoked on this amazingly well done tray flip, it's almost exactly like the one from Senderbender. And the one from Senderbender was buried in the middle of the part, as opposed to this 1993 flip at 920 South Alvarado Street in LA being positioned as one of the last five tricks. With four tricks remaining, Ryan Frontside blunts the hubba at the abandoned Indevco Corporation building right off Rancho Viejo Road in San Juan Capistrano. Is this insane nolly kick Flip filmed with a VX? It wouldn't be a true pro skater video part in SoCal if the Hollywood 16 didn't make an appearance. And Desenzo extends the extensive frontside 360 from Senderbender by applying the trick to the famous high school stair set. And if SLS judges were watching, they'd probably score him below an 8. Good school. The Nolly heel flip nose slide ender at Escondido's Rincon High School was top notch by Ryan, but piss poor by the filming crew. The photographer's standing in a spot that makes this camera angle look like he's in the way. And while we still see Desenzo in all his ender glory, I can't say I'm stoked on the coordination between photographer and videographer with this important shot. Damn, son. Best banger award. The inward heel flip was unexpected, filmed well, executed well, and the added bonus of hyping up the youth in the background all brought a smile to my face that had me re-watching this clip. Do without award. It's easy to be critical about someone that does the same tricks at different spots, but I realize Ryan's skating is in the stunt category. So the emphasis is on distance more so than diversity. I don't necessarily agree with how this part was edited. Jumping back to a spot after showing it earlier is jarring. Like the big stair set that Ryan did four tricks on was sprinkled throughout the part. Why not clump those clips together? So I guess besides the atrocious music selection, the editing was the second worst aspect of this part. Ryan's skating is awesome, and hopefully five years from now, we'll get to see a 40-year-old Desenzo absolutely destroying everything in his path with better editing and better music. If you enjoyed this analysis of Ryan Desenzo's 1990 skate part, be sure to check out some of the other number crunching vids on the channel. Thanks again for tuning in. Don't forget to subscribe to Dumb Data, click the notification bell to stay on top of new episodes, and drop a like if you enjoyed this breakdown. See you on the next Dumb Episode.